Anti-Semitism is back. Trumpism has energized the racist, Jew-hating underbelly of American society. And yet, paradoxically, the Trump administration has also been the most pro-Israel government since Harry Truman. I'm Matt Triple Parentheses Lieb, and I'm going to explain how we are now somehow living in a world where people can love Israel and hate Jews at the exact same time. If you've been paying attention to the American political landscape for the last two years, you've probably noticed it's been a bit Hitlery. Hail Trump! Hail our people! Hail victory! Trump repeatedly deflected when asked to disavow former KKK leader David Duke. Last week, headstones were toppled at a Jewish cemetery in St. Louis, Missouri. Police are investigating a slew of bomb threats targeting Jewish community centers all across the country today. Jews will not replace us! You know, I'm proud to have that German blood. There's no question about it. Great stuff. Jesus. That clip would actually be less disturbing if he ended it by drinking a cup of German blood. You'd think someone who ran a campaign so rife with anti-Semitism and supported by Nazis and the KKK would be heavily criticized by the Prime Minister of the Jewish state. I mean, surely Benjamin Netanyahu will have some strong words for Donald Trump. There is no greater supporter of the Jewish people and the Jewish state than President Donald Trump. Damn, he... what? Also, you might remember after the Charlottesville march, Trump famously said there are some very fine Nazi-adjacent marchers. Well, surely that caused the Prime Minister of Israel to condemn Trump. I mean, it had to. Netanyahu has been notably quiet. Oh, giving Trump the old silent treatment. Uh, I see you. Netanyahu's silence actually speaks volumes, especially when you consider that in 2015, he literally made a plea directly to American Jews to speak out against Obama's Iran deal. The days when the Jewish people could not or would not speak up for themselves, those days are over. Oh, 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 I see. Okay, so you're only a friend to American Jews when you want something, but as soon as the Nazis show up, you just ghost on us. Man, Netanyahu is a classic boy. But how can someone be both pro-Jewish state and anti-Jewish person? How can a president's two biggest fans be the heads of Israel and the KKK? For the last few decades in America, right-wing pundits, politicians, and Christian leadership have changed the conversation around what constitutes anti-Semitism and shifted the definition from bashing Jews to bashing Israel anti-Israeli and anti-Semitic protests. Anti-Israeli, anti-Semitic cesspool. Today, anti-Semitism hides behind the label of anti-Israel. The new anti-Semitism. Yep, this ain't my bubby's anti-Semitism. You know, the one that displaced my bubby and killed her bubby and her bubby's bubby and enslaved her great grand bubby. No, this is the new anti-Semitism. The one that boycotts my bubby's third favorite brand of hummus. Now, this is not to say that criticism of Israel can't be anti-Semitic. It absolutely can be. Calling someone a Zionist as a code word for Jew or just generally conflating Jews and Israel as if they are interchangeable is anti-Semitic because it implies that all Jews are secretly loyal to Israel, which makes no sense because 66% of Jews do not live in Israel and 25% of Israelis are not Jewish. But the weird thing about conflating Jew and Israel is that it's actually constantly being perpetuated by American conservatives, evangelical Christians, and Israelis politicians, usually in the same sentence. The lifelong friend of Israel and the Jewish people. Pro-Israel, pro-Jewish. The Jewish people and the Jewish state. Israel and to the Jewish people. State of Israel or the Jewish people themselves. Israel and, and the Jewish people specifically. They keep saying Israel and the Jewish people as if they're one and the same. Uh, is the word, are you looking for Israeli? Is that the word you're looking for? Because... So why are conservatives constantly conflating the Jewish people and Israel? Well, there's two reasons. Reason number one, by making support of Israel synonymous with support of Jews, they're also making opposition to Israel look like opposition to Jews. And reason number two, if any of your right-wing buddies lets a little bit of the old anti-Semitism slip, like how Steve Bannon reportedly said he didn't want his daughters to go to school with Jews, well, being pro-Israel is a convenient cover. 
are you giving him cover by for being anti-Semitism? Out like that? Yeah. There's no reason whatsoever to believe that Steve Bannon is anything but a friend of the state of Israel. No one's talking about Israel, my dude. All right, in no other instance would that line of reasoning be acceptable. Well, well, of course Steve Bannon doesn't hate Mexicans. He has stated unequivocally that he cures Taco Bell. And that's just it. Being pro-Israel and getting Israel's endorsement in return gives a ton of leeway for these anti-Semites to do their whole not liking Jews thing. But it still begs the question, why would someone who hates Jews support Israel? Well, there's lots of reasons. Let's start with Steve Bannon. I'm proud to be a Christian Zionist. That's why I'm proud to be a partner to one of the greatest nations on earth and the foundation of the Judeo-Christian West. Ooh, he really hit a hard J on Judeo, didn't he? You see, Bannon sees Israel as a natural ally in his racist war between Islam and the Judeo-Christian West, which is code for white European society. It's not that Bannon loves the Jews, it's just that he doesn't hate us as much as he hates the Muslims. He is so sweet. You know, like the way antifreeze is sweet. Also, evangelical Christians, they're some of the biggest supporters of Israel in the United States, but not because they love Jews. They support Israel because of a prophecy that says all Jews must return to Israel in order for Christ to return and commence the end times. Israel has been reborn as a country. Jews are returning back to the Holy Land after centuries of exile. That's exciting. And those are end times prophecies. If you're a believer in, in Jesus, you will go up you, you, the, the um, rapture. rapture. The Jewish people, it's still a mystery how God's going to work all that. Ooh, it seems like the fate of the Jews is within the mystery box. Let's see what's in it. Two thirds of them are going to die. That one third that's left at the end is going to finally come to the end of themselves. It's not going to be through a process of education. It's going to be a, through a process of a horrible holocaust. Tie, 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 tie. So basically, Christian Zionism is a plot to get all Jews together in Israel so that it triggers a Jewish genocide. And the smattering of Jews left after that will get to choose between Christianity or hell. It's a f***ing long con. Christian Zionists are like the Kaiser Soze of allies. Even some white nationalists like Richard Spencer have shown perverse admiration for Israel. You could say that I am a white Zionist in the sense that I, I care about my people. I want us to have a secure homeland. You realize how f***ing insane this is, right? What you have here is a actual Nazi using the state of Israel, which was created in the wake of Nazi atrocities, as a model for a white ethno state. Even though it's kind of funny that Richard Spencer is so fragile that he thinks that seeing a black good guy in Star Wars is white oppression, it's still disturbing that a Jew hater can look at Israel and think, I like what you've done with the place. And that brings us finally to Donald Trump, who is a much simpler racist. You know, like the way a dog is racist. He likes Israel because he likes walls and fascism. You know, in Israel, they profile. They've done a, an unbelievable job. They see somebody that's suspicious, they will profile. Walls work. Just ask Israel. Oh. My. G dash D. The right has been trying to coax American Jews into the conservative fold for decades, spreading the fear of a new anti-Semitism infecting the hearts of the left, all the while claiming that conservatives and Christians are the Jews' only real friends. They're gaslighting us. Oh, don't worry about the Nazis marching in the street or sitting in the White House. The real Nazis are boycotting hummus. It shouldn't be all that surprising that the racist, ethno-nationalist, evangelical supporters of Israel who hate everyone that's not exactly like them also hate the Jews. Racist gonna racist, but it's not that crazy. But the fact that the Israeli government can only find their staunchest support among the racist fringes of the radical far right speaks volumes about the direction that Netanyahu is leading the state of Israel. And you know what? I want no part of it. Hey everyone, it would be so rad if you jumped into the comments section to join the discussion about the Jew-Israel anti-Semitism disconnect. And it'd be even more rad if you didn't jump into the comments and be anti-Semitic. Thank you so much for watching everyone. My name is Matt Lieb. Follow me on Twitter and please don't, you know, send me a private message calling me a kike.